I'm going to take you through the game between Ungwen Son and Luke McShane from round three of the Isle of Man FideChess.com Grand Swiss Tournament. Don't forget, like, comment, share and subscribe. And if you'd like to support us, do check out the links to Patreon.com and also PayPal. So on with this game. Now, this is spectacular. Watch on because you're in for a treat. So the Vietnamese player Nguyen with the white pieces. He's 29 years old. Uh, he was a real prodigy. Actually got the Grandmaster title at a very young age. Um, you could say Luke McShane was also something of a prodigy too. Uh, but he's now 35 years old. So Battle of the Ex-Prodigies. Um, it's a Spanish and Berlin variation. And instead of the end game, white plays pawn to d3. And here, well, we've seen many games where white simply exchanges on c6. But instead, Nguyen castles kingside. And now McShane takes the opportunity to exchange those knights. It's actually quite a significant moment in the game, but that's that's said with hindsight. So knights exchanged. I'll explain more later. And the bishop drops. So a familiar position, and bishop a4 is a common move here, as played in our game. Um, I also quite like uh, knight a3 in this position to bring the knight to c4 potentially. But anyway, bishop a4 and bishop g5. So bishop a4 preempted c6, of course. Um, so bishop g5, this takes advantage of the fact that black's bishop can't come to e7 to break this pin. And you could say that causes a little bit of tension in black's position because black has to think, how do I deal with that? Well, McShane played h6 and put the question to the bishop. Of course, it's an elegant exchange off for the knight and drops back. And d6, simple development so far. And here is where McShane makes a big decision. He plays pawn to g5. You don't have to play pawn to g5. For example, bishop g4 and also bishop b6 have been played before. But after g5, well, Luke is... Uh, he, he likes to attack, let's put it like that, if he sees the chance. You can also play great strategic games, as we saw, actually, um, if you check out his round two game, that was a beautiful strategic performance. But today he goes on the attack. One could also just play bishop g4 here and follow up with knight h5. That's not bad, but uh, Luke goes for it with h5. Obviously threatening to trap the bishop with h4. Now here white has really two options. Um, we can't play f3 to drop the bishop back because it would put the king in check. So white either plays h3 or h4. Well, h3 was played in the game. h4 could be met by bishop g4. Remember, still can't move that f-pawn. And McShane said he was going to play knight h7, threatening to take here. Um, and that basically means that black's queen is going to come into the game. And that's already, well, quite an interesting position, actually. You can see that basically black has more pieces um, in the attack. It's, it's not so easy for white to switch pieces across to defense. And there is also potential to sneak the king in the corner. But this is still a very unclear position, say, after f4. It's uh, all bets are off here. In any case h4 wasn't played, h3 instead. McShane pushed the bishop and then just crashed on with pawn to g4. 
So if that's captured, then let's say here and knight h5 and black certainly has the initiative there. This bishop on b6 is actually very annoying. Uh, there are you know interesting possibilities like knight g3 uh, to exploit that pin. So off g4, king h1 played and McShane followed suit with king h8 ready to play the rook to the g-file. All very straightforward so far. And once again, if that pawn's taken on g4 and then knight takes g4, but after a 23-minute think, and Gwen played f4. So fighting fire with fire, actually. And this position can turn very easily both sides have to be extremely careful. So white sets up counterplay on the F file. Well, McShane took on H3. And now there's a very interesting possibility. And that's pawn to F5 to shut out the bishop on C8. Then black could play this and rook G8. Now, McShane mentioned after the game that he was thinking perhaps just bishop d7 here and, and bringing his pieces over, and that is fine. That's one way of playing. It's another very interesting way of playing, and that's rook g7 with the idea of putting the rook on h7. Nice little shuffle, this. That means the black's king is very safe. And then you're ready to play knight h5 and potentially going into g3 as well. But I do like that little shuffle of the rook over to h7. It's it's not just a defensive move, it's actually uh, looks to take the initiative as well. But anyway, f5 was certainly a move to be considered, shutting out that bishop on c8. But instead of that, uh, white exchanged uh, just recaptured on h3 and that pawn was taken so black has won a pawn this bishop comes to a threatening diagonal and that bishop slices across as well but the vietnamese player had pinned his hopes on this move rook f3 attacking the bishop and then bishop g4 and pawn takes pawn. So white's king side uh, has been wrecked, but at the moment it's got the cover of the bishop. And in return for losing all those pawns there, he's managed to capture on e5. Uh, and of course, something like this is potentially disastrous with a pin here. Um, what happens if black takes the exchange? Well, again, this is really helpful to white uh, because that would allow the queen's rook into the game. You can see there's tremendous pressure on the f-file and that bishop would very much like to enter the game here. Black's king looking in trouble in that position. So it would be a big mistake to actually take that rook. So McShane played knight h5. Now things are really starting to hot up uh, because that introduces potentially the queen into the game and also potentially knight g3 as well. So queen f1. White frees the rook for action now that the pin is broken. Once again, it would be a terrible mistake for black to take that rook. It just somehow makes sense of white's pieces. They, they, they come into the game, the queen comes into the game, black's king looks in dreadful trouble. But instead McShane played queen g5, much stronger move, keeping that bishop on g4. Black's pieces just 
poised for action, but they're not taking anything yet, which would uh, potentially hand over the initiative. Um, queen takes knight threatened. Knight c4. Now, here is where McShane played an absolutely spectacular move. You might like to have a little think about how you would play in this position with black before I career on. I should say actually there's more than one good move in this position. When we were looking at this game on the live commentary, I actually thought that rook g8 was uh, a very decent move for black. And, well, you can see the problem in the two positions is that, uh, well, black's rooks are connected and ready for action, and this queen's rook is actually out of the game. So I think rook g8 is pretty good. Um, McShane played f5, which is even stronger, certainly more forcing, and again exploits the fact that black's rooks are connected, white's rooks are split. There you go, my famous line that I like saying, split rooks are not good things. Um, and all black's pieces come into the game after this move. So let's see what would happen if, for example, pawn takes pawn here. Then we can actually take the rook. And this is a very different proposition because black's rook comes into the game. And here's a nice move. Well, I think there are a lot of good moves for black here, but rook h6 followed by knight g3, leaves white's king in terrible trouble. And the same applies to pawn takes pawn here. Um, you can actually play knight g3 first, but this is sufficient for black. And a knight g3 is actually even stronger, because in this position uh, it's very hard for white to defend against the invasion on the h-file with this kind of move if rook takes. And here, a very simple move actually, rook g8. And there is no decent defense here for white. Um, well, we just want to play bishop h3 and exchange and get rook number two in. And the combination of, well, I mean, black's pieces and the two bishops are so powerful here. So in the game, after this amazing move, f5, and Gwen took on uh, b6, that was recaptured. I mean, white just doesn't have a moment to rest here because he now has to move that bishop, which went into b7. And bishop takes rook. So if we do a material count, then, well, black is the exchange up. But actually, that's not the real point in this position. It's not about the material. It's about the activity of the pieces. And black's pieces are simply better placed than white's, in particular that rook stuck in the corner. And, of course, white's king doesn't have any pawn cover. So, in fact, knight g3 is a very strong move here, um, but and, and that would continue the attack, but McShane um, actually played in a very simple way that really didn't involve a huge amount of risk or any risk of miscalculation. He took on e4, uncovering an attack here, so queen takes, oh, excuse me, not queen takes, um, queen g4. Uh, in that case, uh, knight, g4 would have, knight g3 would have come in anyway. So knight g3 and an end game arises. So actually a, a very calm way of just finishing the game actually because I mean, white doesn't have anything here. White's just the exchange down actually. Let's just go through the final few moves. Rook f4 threatens the bishop. And simple recapture. So what's the pawn count? In fact, 
black is even one pawn up plus this extra exchange. And this is rather nice that the rook reaches the second rank, which absolutely guarantees the win because now there's an attack against white's king. Rook number two enters the game. And at this moment, white resigned. So why exactly here? Well, let's say bishop takes pawn. Then there's a check on h4 and g2 threatening rook h1 mate and if that's taken then rook g4 wins the bishop and that's a whole extra rook for black beautiful game by luke mcshane you know he's very confident in these sharp tactical positions um and that move f5 really is a spectacular idea. Good stuff. OK, there'll be more coming from the Isle of Man very shortly. Thanks very much for watching.